what's up guys, this is Steve Randall and Knight and today we've got for you is my top 10 apps for the LG G4, so I hope you enjoy. So the first app on this list is AC Display and what this does is it replaces your lock screen and one of the cool things it has is a feature that will automatically turn your phone on when you pull it out of your pocket. Information on the lock screen for different notifications and the lock screen dynamically changes uh, its background dependence upon your notification. You also have a pretty standardised clock and of course the date as well. Next up we have AnyDo. Now I'm a naturally very disorganised person, I find it really difficult to organise stuff for university, stuff for YouTube. You guys can kind of see that in the um, sort of the scarcity of my output and how inconsistent I am. It's sort of a combination of a list making and task managing app. So for example I've got all these different categories. So I can click into YouTube here and you have lists of all the things I need to do for YouTube. When you complete a task you can simply swipe across. You can then shake the phone to delete those tasks that you've swiped. It also has a cool feature called AnyDo Moment, and this allows you in the morning, you can set whatever time you want. So I think I have it set for like nine in the morning. It will go through all those tasks that you have for the day and you can tell the phone if you're gonna do it in the afternoon, in the morning, if you're gonna leave it till next week. And then throughout the day and throughout the next couple of weeks, your phone will remind you of things that you need to do. So that's AnyDo, and I think it's definitely one of the best organisational apps on the Play Store. Another thing I am really bad at is getting up on time in the morning. So for me, Sleep Better is one of the best apps you can have installed on your phone. It's an alarm app, but it does sort of slightly more than that. This app will not only wake you up, but it will wake you up within a window, and it will wake you during a period of light sleep. So you have heavy and light sleep cycles, and if you wake up during a heavy sleep cycle, you wake up more tired, is kind of the premise of it. I don't know whether it's a placebo effect, but it definitely does seem to work. This makes you feel sort of slightly more invigorated in the morning. It's also got some pretty cool features where you can record how your day's been, so whether you've worked out, whether it's been stressful, whether you've drank alcohol or coffee, for example, and this will track all that data for you. You can see how these things affect your sleep. You have nice statistics which will tell you how much sleep you're getting um, and the quality of that sleep. There's also a dream diary feature built in, which is quite good. I always tend to note down my dreams in the morning because I find them really interesting. Um, I use them to write from a lot of the time, so that's a really nice feature to have. All in all, this is definitely one of the best alarm apps I've used um, especially because it's got all that lifestyle stuff behind it, sort of the sleep tracking and stuff. I am going to do another video on my favourite alarm apps, so this is probably going to be pretty high up in that list as well. But for me, as an everyday app, this is one of the best you can be using. Now, one of the main things people use their phones for is obviously music, and for me, Spotify is the best music streaming service at the moment. It's recently had a nice big UI overhaul, it looks really, really nice and sleek now. All the stuff you'd expect to find in a music app a day, you've got playlists, artists, you can save offline, you can stream. As well as this, it's got some really nice radio features, so it will find you new music depending on what you've been listening to. It also plugs into Facebook, which I find really useful just for finding playlists, sharing playlists. It's also got a neat feature which allows you to use your phone as a remote for your MacBook or your laptop or, or any other device um, playing Spotify. That also includes Sonos systems, so if you've got one of those, Spotify app will work for you as well. If you're a student, you can put in your student number card and you can get this for half price, which drops it from £10 a week, sorry, £10 a month to £5 a month. Next up, we have Google Inbox, and this is the new sort of Gmail replacement that Google have released. The coolest thing about this is the pinning feature, which I've shown you guys before, which just allows you to pin stuff um, and then have it sort of as a to-do list. A lot of these apps are kind of geared towards productivity because it's something I'm not very good at anyway, so I think um, inbox kind of fits in that sort of general slant of applications that I use a lot. But just the general UI is much cleaner and much easier to use than Gmail. You can swipe across to mark stuff as done. And you can also snooze things, so if you've got an email that you need to respond to in the next week, you can snooze it and in the next week it'll give you an alert for that. Next up we have SwiftKey, which is pretty much my favourite keyboard and has been for the last like five or ten, five or ten years, last five years. One issue I had with the keyboard on the LG G4 in stock was the landscape one, um, the way it shrinks to the middle of the screen. I can kind of see why they did that, but I think it looks kind of ugly and it looks a little bit um, sort of tacked on and broken. SwiftKey replaces this and you've got a bunch of different options for um, landscape and portrait. You can mess around with different themes, different sizes, you can split it so you can have thumb mode for example in landscape. Just works really really well. Also plugs into all of your cloud services so it will be putting things like email addresses, um, it'll know your most used words and it syncs across multiple devices. So it's a really good way to get a nice customised typing experience and if you do use this on a tablet as well as your phone um, and if you do a lot of writing especially then it will sort of learn your style and it will become quicker and quicker and quicker and it's just a really nice reliable keyboard. Next up we have one of the sexier apps on the list which is FX File Explorer. Now File Explorers are never sort of fun to use but the one that comes on the LG G4 is alright, it isn't fantastic. FX File Explorer is brilliant if you use cloud storage as well as the storage on your device. You can go into split screen mode 
and you can drag and drop stuff across from an active cloud storage account. You can do this with Google Drive, Dropbox, um, a couple of the other ones, the names of which I forget. You do need to get the premium plugin for the cloud services to work, um, but I couldn't recommend it more. As a standalone file manager, it does everything you'd need and expect from a file manager, and it does it looking pretty prettily, if I may say so. And if you're rooted, there are also plugins that you can use to access your root folders as well. Next up, we have Chrome Remote Desktop, and this is one of the apps that I think should sort of come pre-installed on all Android phones. This just allows you to control your laptop or your MacBook or um, whatever computer you're using as long as you've got Chrome browser installed. It's a really, really powerful tool if you go to like work or to a class or something and you realize you've left something on your laptop. You can use this to log on and email it to yourself or drop it into Google Drive or whatever. It's also really useful if you use your laptop, say with a projector or to control a TV. It just means you can sit there, you don't need to bother with faff around with your laptop, you can just control it all from your phone. Next up we have Musi, which is still my favourite live wallpaper and I know I've been going on about this for ages. But it will pull in different artworks from across the world, um, sort of in across time periods and put them on your home screen. It also does this really nice blur effect, which really makes your icons pop and look really colourful and bright and sort of in your face in a really good way. And then if you tap the background, it will unfuzz it and you can see the full, um, the full work of art if you're using their artwork. If not, you can add all your own streams, a bunch of different apps have different... Um, different photo streams you can attach to it or you can just use your own and you can set that and you get the nice blur effect and the dim effect. I wouldn't normally put a live wallpaper in sort of my top 10 apps for something but it is one of those things that pretty much brings any home screen together and sort of gives your phone that nice sort of um, you know, like designery edge that I think sometimes it doesn't have just with the stock stuff that LG puts on it. And finally we've got AirDroid. Now this has replaced an app I was using for a while called Pushbullet which is a notification um, system which pushes notifications from your phone to your laptop. AirDroid does much the same thing, you get all your notifications on your phone, also on your laptop and you can respond to them there. But you also get a whole suite of options as far as like doing file transfers wirelessly, you can activate the camera and stuff remotely, you can do some wipes, you can find where your phone is. It's just a little bit more fully featured than Pushbullet. If you want added functionality as far as being able to control your phone, from your laptop and being able to keep up to date with stuff, then AirDroid, I think, is probably the best option at the moment. So there you are, guys. Those are my top 10 apps for the LG G4. I apologise if this video seems slightly odd. Um, I did a couple of things. I forgot my tripod, so my camera is currently propped on a big pile of books, so it's looking kind of precarious, and I'm worried it's going to fall off. Ooh. It's also really hot in here, so I'm going to go drink a lot of water and then edit this. But if there's anything else you would like to see, drop a comment below. If you haven't seen me before, please subscribe. It really does help. Please comment below if there's any apps you think I should be using on my LG G4 or on any other phone for that matter. You can follow me on all my social media things with the links in the description and I shall see you guys in the next video. Peace.